Intermittent fasting has gained popularity over the past few years, and for good reason. Studies have shown that it may help you lose weight, lower your risk of certain chronic diseases, and even give your brain a boost. But some critics have suggested that women shouldn't do intermittent fasting, partly because it may negatively impact DHEA, estrogen, and other reproductive hormones. In this week's video, I'll review a recent study that sheds light on this question. I'll also share my clinical experience using intermittent fasting with my female patients and give tips on deciding if intermittent fasting is right for you. Ready? Let's dive in. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Crosser with another Tuesday tip video for you. A team of researchers published a study in the journal Obesity to find out how time-restricted eating, also known as intermittent fasting, affects sex hormones in obese pre- and postmenopausal women. The women in the study consumed all of their food within a four to six hour period each day for eight weeks. The researchers measured DHEA, androstenedione, testosterone, and sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG levels, in both pre- and postmenopausal women. They also measured estrogen and progesterone levels in postmenopausal women, but not in premenopausal women because of how these hormones fluctuate throughout the menstrual cycle. There was no change in testosterone or androstenedione levels in either pre- or postmenopausal women. However, while DHEA levels were still in the normal range at the end of the study, they did decrease by about 14% over the eight-week period. This is of potential concern because DHEA positively impacts ovarian function and egg quality. Some fertility specialists prescribed supplemental DHEA to their patients for this reason. On the other hand, several studies have shown that a reduction in body mass index in obese women can significantly improve fertility. In an interview in Science Daily, Krista Varity, the lead author of the study, said, quote, This suggested in premenopausal women, the minor drop in DHEA levels has to be weighed against the proven fertility benefits of lower body mass. The drop in DHEA levels in postmenopausal women could be concerning because menopause already causes a dramatic drop in estrogen and DHEA is a primary component of estrogen. However, a survey of the participants reported no negative side effects associated with low estrogen postmenopause, such as sexual dysfunction or skin changes. The drop in DHEA levels in postmenopausal women, especially because they remained in the normal range, may be less of a concern in fact, given the association between high DHEA levels and breast cancer risk, we might even view this as a benefit. DHEA and estrogen support healthy bones in women, so some clinicians have worried that intermittent fasting may have a negative impact on bone density. But a six-month randomized controlled trial also published in the journal Obesity found that time-restricted eating did not negatively impact bone health. On the contrary, the participants that lost weight during the trial saw a slight improvement in some measures of bone health. So does this mean that intermittent fasting is a good idea for all women? Not necessarily. In my 15-year career treating hundreds of women, I've seen both positive and negative responses to intermittent fasting. I found that the best way to predict whether intermittent fasting will provide a benefit is to better understand how time-restricted eating works. Intermittent fasting is what's known as a hormetic stressor. A hormetic stressor is a form of stress that induces a positive adaptation. In other words, it's a stressor that improves the functioning of the body over time. Lifting weights is a good example. If you lift heavy weights, your muscle tissue will break down. This might sound bad on the surface, but the stress of that heavy weight breaking down your muscle tissue causes your muscles to rebuild stronger so they can face that same challenge in the future. This is why weightlifting leads to bigger muscles. Intermittent fasting works in a similar fashion. Our cells experience a mild form of stress while we're fasting. This initiates a waste removal process called autophagy, which eliminates dysfunctional damaged cells to make room for new healthy ones. Autophagy has been shown to reduce oxidative stress and inflammation and protect against diseases like cancer and dementia. Here's the key thing to understand. While intermittent fasting can have a hormetic or positive effect when background levels of stress are relatively low, it can push us over the edge if overall stress levels are high. This makes sense, right? 
Going back to the weightlifting analogy, we understand that pushing it too hard when our bodies are already taxed from things like poor sleep, a chronic health condition, or other stressors will be counterproductive. The same can be true with intermittent fasting. Imagine a woman struggling with an autoimmune disease, not sleeping well, with three kids and a job outside the home and under tremendous financial stress. Intermittent fasting might be too much additional stress on her system. If you're in any of the following circumstances, I'd advise caution with intermittent fasting or in some cases avoiding it altogether. You're suffering from chronic fatigue or HPA axis dysregulation, also known as adrenal fatigue. Your hormones are out of whack. You're trying to maximize fertility unless you're significantly overweight, in which case the benefits of weight loss may outweigh any potential impact on DHEA levels, as this study showed. You suffer from any type of eating disorder. You're under a lot of stress or you work at home. I have a podcast episode called Is Intermittent Fasting Good For You? that goes into more detail on how to determine if time-restricted eating is right for you. I'll put a link to that in the description. I'll also link to an article on my website called Intermittent Fasting, The Science Behind the Trend. It summarizes the most recent research on intermittent fasting and explains the mechanisms in more depth. Okay, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the subscribe button in the lower right and tap the notification bell so you'll be updated when I release new content. If you know someone that might benefit from this, please do share it with them by clicking the share button right under the video. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.